I also think that within the next half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, you guys are going to hear a fabulous, thrilling tale of how I, Dan Timmons, went down to the wilds of Patagonia oh. <laughs> and captured us, not live unfortunately, a wervrin whose skeleton we'll be auctioning off later. Yes, I did this. And I will share the story of, uh, of what went on there because it's actually fascinating. Laura was with me. Moving she was my... Fun fact, Dan the vegetarian is also an excellent hunter. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, and Laura was my assistant, so she can verify that everything I tell you actually happened. True. Despite what some of these jokers are going to claim later in the event. Don't believe them. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, there's some, there's some, perhaps some of these guys think that they had something to do with the Wyvern hunt, and they certainly did not. So no, we'll, we'll clear that up later. I'm going to get the hat, because you need to be wearing a special hat to tell the story, and then I'll get this started. So Laura's okay. going to have two microphones, oh. and she's going to do another little song, Laura song for you. Uh, <laughs> another so this interlude. Is, this will be another interlude, an original composition by Laura Mills. Uh, so please, everybody, you know, give her your support. And we're back. All right, I got my explorer hat on. All right. All right. So set the scene. So there it was, friends. I was out there with my assistant Laura in the wilds of Patagonia. Now, we had sailed down to Buenos Aires the week before, and it was a terrible trip. Like, half the ship got seasick. We, of course, did not. No. No. Season travelers. Season travelers. Uh, so we arrived in Buenos Aires. We skipped the brothels this time uh, because we were on a mission. We had heard through several contacts out there in the local communities in Patagonia that a wyvern had been spotted flying around. Now, for those of you who don't know, a wyvern is sort of like a dragon but it doesn't have any front legs. It's just wings and legs, back legs, and a tail. And uh, we'd heard this one spit some kind of, I don't know, sort of like napalm. So we figured it was some kind of uh, mutation of some sort. Anyway, so we'd heard this wyvern was flying around down there in the wilds of Patagonia, so we headed down to check it out. Now, originally, this was just going to be an observation mission. We were just going to go, maybe take some pictures. Now, I brought my good, my good rifle, Bessie, with me. Because I knew that these wyverns, sometimes they get uppity. And when a wyvern gets uppity, you got no choice but to defend yourself. So we went, we went, we went out. We were out there in the bush, camping, traveling, searching. We were out there for a good month before we'd seen any sign. And then we saw footprints. So we followed the footprints and we came upon some goat carcasses. And after my assistant Laura carefully examined those goat carcasses, she determined that the goats were indeed killed by a napon spewing, claw wielding, angry wyvern. And this weather. thing was huge. Well, let me tell you, it was the size of at least three school buses. Huge, napon spewing. Wyvern of Doom. So we were a little worried, I tell you, just a little bit, you know, like I just, it seemed like an awful lot of a, and, and Laura was getting kind of shaky. She was a little, a little, she hadn't worked on her muscles. This is before she got her muscles. She was a little terrified. And, but we decided we'd, we'd hang around. We needed to get some pictures. We had to prove that this beast existed. So we needed some pictures for the, for the internets there. And yep. so we, uh, we took out the camera and we continued looking. Mm -hmm. The next day, sunrise, we caught sight of the beast. We saw it perched up on a cliffside, and Laura took some fabulous pictures. And we thought we were done. We got the pictures. We even saw it napalm spray an eagle or something. I think it was endangered, but I wasn't going to tell do? the word for that, right? I mean, <laughs> come on. And uh, we thought we were good. We were going to get away, and then all of a sudden it spotted us. It looked down and saw the sunlight glinting off the lens of Laura's camera. And we knew we were in trouble. That wyvern had seen us, and it was coming right for us. It swooped down off the cliff, spraying napalm at us like crazy. I managed to dive behind a rock. Laura dived behind another rock. But the camera was left sitting on the tripod, and it was completely enveloped in napalm. So I'm sorry. The pictures are gone. I mean, we, yeah. l Laura's got the napalm burns to prove it, but they're on her butt, and it's a family show, so she <laughs> can't show you. Uh... So the camera's destroyed. We've dove behind some rocks. Luckily, I still had Bessie with me. I managed to pull her out, and uh, darned if I got lucky, but I shot that wyvern oh, right between the eyes. So the wyvern falls dead in front of us, leaking this weird toxic napalm right, stuff all over the place. 
So we managed to get a bunch of the locals together and we trust her up. And uh, we got her back up to Buenos Aires and we packed her up in a crate and we went to ship her back to Canada. <laughs> and it was going to cost us $42,000. To ship it to Canada yeah. uh, on boat, and it's like I can't afford no forty-two thousand dollars. I said, "Lord, do you can. have forty? No, nah, Lord no. doesn't have forty-two thousand dollars." You know, so we're like, "All right, well, what are we gonna do?" So we looked around Buenos Aires, and we went to those brothels we had skipped on the first trip, and we managed to find in one of those brothels a mad scientist named Ark von von Ark von. And now Ark von, <laughs> he was from uh, one of those Eastern Europe companies. Uh, I don't know. They used to call it Bohemia, whatever out there. And uh, he had invented, so he claimed, a shrink ray. So he said, I can shrink that. Well, actually, it was more like, I can shrink that up for you, no problem. And I said, really, how much is that going to cost? He said, 20 bucks. Oh, no. So $42,000 or 20 bucks. I said, how small can he make it? He says, small enough to fit in a suitcase. So Dr. Ark Von Von Ark Von pulls out his shrink ray, brought him down to the warehouse, zaps the Werberin, bang, tiny. The thing's like this big now. And he assured us that we could just take it up here and we could unshrink it when we got here. We're like, awesome. Packed it in my suitcase, hopped on the plane, got strip searched by the NSA, back in Canada. Here we are. Pull out the Werberin. Here's, let me give you some advice, guys. Don't ever buy a $20 shrink ray from some crazy scientist you meet in a brothel in Buenos Aires. Because, you know what? Might not be the most legit thing. It's not, no. The unshrink button didn't work. So the Wyvern is still tiny. Bad news, the Wyvern is tiny. The good news is, we'll be auctioning off its skeleton later. Yes. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jim, uh, or Handsome Jack, will bring the skeleton down and uh we'll show it to you at some we'll point we'll show it to you at some point but yeah that's my ribbon hunting story yeah so i don't know what these guys are going to tell you later but uh my story is a true story and Legit laura truth. was there for the whole thing she's even got the <laughs> napalm burns on her butt to prove it <laughs>